Hello everyone. This is Vaseen from Eureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about Python API's. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. So firstly, I'm going to start with what exactly is an API and after that we will learn about the different types of requests and response codes that we have and moving further we will discuss how we can make an API request and to finally sum up this session we will run a custom API to send and receive data. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorial and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And if you are looking for a certification program, the link is given in the description box below. Also, tell us in the comment section guys if you are new to Python and what sort of concepts you are looking for and what sort of tutorials do you want us to do next. So moving on, let's talk about what exactly is an API. A Python API is nothing but an application programming interface, which is also the full form of API that is used to send and receive data on a server. And it is primarily used to manipulate data in the server using external script. And a simple example would be how Spotify, Twitter, etc. have their web APIs for the users to retrieve data using the internet. So now to you know approach this in a simplified way. We can call API as an interface to any product or you know that is being you know deployed on a server where we can have an external program write a script and manipulate the data in a way where we are actually receiving or updating the values there. So let's say for example Twitter has an a web API what we can do now here to retrieve and to send data we will have an external script and using that web API we will be able to retrieve the data from over there. So that is how APIs work generally and normally there are a few reasons why we should go for you know an API at all. The first one is so when your data set is too large you should go for an API so that every time you need data you are able to retrieve or update the values from the data set using the API and the second reason would be your users need data. So let's say you have a server which is deployed and so a lot of users need your data. And in order to do that you must have an API that they can interact with retrieve data from and simultaneously use it on their own platforms or whatever work they need it for. And after that the third one would be data keeps updating or changing. So let's say if you have a product or there is a server where that I has to keep update and keep changing. So you should have an API for that so that those values whatever you have to update or change are, and you know you can keep updating them using the web APIs. This is all about the API. In general, so this is exactly what I'm going to show you guys how we are going to make an API and we're going to use a flask web app for that and we're going to make a web API from that particular app and we'll show how we can retrieve data from the API in a JSON format etc. So moving further in this session. Let me talk about what are HTTP requests so before moving on. We must be aware of terminologies like URL and there are terminologies like JSON. HTTP. So what exactly are these terminologies? So URL stands for uniform resource locator. It's basically an address. So whatever you know on your web browsers the address that you put in the section where you want to go to a particular website that particular address is also known as a URL and it plays an important role while making a web API because URL is basically the primary source of you know locating any resource. And after that we have HTTP hypertext transfer protocol which basically serves as the means of primary communication for any server and then we have JSON which is also known as JavaScript object notation which is basically nothing but a data format on the internet which is both readable by the computer and the humans. It's quite efficient for both of us. So that's why we use JSON and there are other formats as well. There are XML format that we can use. Now let's talk about a few requests. And the most common ones or the most common HTTP requests are get and post request. So a get request is used to retrieve data from the resource and post request is used to update or add new data through the server. So in simple language okay I have already told you what exactly is an HTTP which is you know hypertext transfer protocol and it just used to enable communication between the server and the clients clients here will be a user let's say. So let's say if you want to you know convey or get some value from the server what you will do is use an HTTP get request and it will uh, locate the resource and get the values or the data from the resource basically in the form of a data format which is readable to you which can be a JSON format or an XML format as well. On the other hand if you want to send some value or send some data to the resource through the server what you can do is 
you can use a http post request where you can just send any data through the server to the resource and that is how get and post work the other http request include a put and delete so put basically is a lot similar to a post method only but there's only one difference it is used to send data to a server and create an or update a resource but the difference is that put request are item potent which means that every time you call a post request there'll be a new entry in the resource so let's say if your resource is a database and if you're sending data to the database through a post request every time you call that request there will be an entry in the database but for a put request every time you execute that put request only one entry will be there in the database so that is how put and post requests differ from one another and then we have the delete method of course which is used to delete a specified resource and yes so this is all about the http request that we should know about and after that we have the response status codes guys so for each request that we make there are certain status codes guys so let's say if i want to execute a get request so there'll be a status code associated with it so the status code element in a server response is basically a three digit integer which tells us about the status which can be a failure a success or there'll be some sort of indication that there has been an error or it will redirect you to somewhere else or it might just tell you there is an error on server side there'll be an error on the client side so basically if a status code starts with four it will be a client error if it starts with five it will be a server error in case of a success it starts with a two normally 200 and if it's an informational status code which basically means that request has been received and the process is continuing it will start with a one if there is any redirection there it will start with three which basically means further action must be taken in order to complete the request so whenever we are making an api request we have to make sure that the status code is always 200 so that we means that the request has been successfully made and that is what we should aim for in case if we have any errors we can you know basically solve them based on how we will pursue it based on the kind of error it is now we have actually discussed the response status codes as well let's try to go to pycharm and we'll see how we can make a simple api and we are going to use flask so i'll just quickly tell you how you can install flask and everything so let's go to pycharm guys so i've already created a project over here i'll just tell you what you should do so since we are also using a database integration in this we are going to have to install mysql client and flask mysql db with flask so these are the three things that you have to make sure that you have installed make sure you have made a virtual environment so that there's no errors while you're executing these commands so this is the primary api that i have created using flask so i'll just quickly tell you all the you know functions or whatever i have used over here i'll explain the code to you so if you are not new to flask you know exactly how you can uh, start an application so what you do is you write from flask import flask after that you give the app or you know define the object over here and then quickly you can just define a app dot route which is nothing but a url for your app and here i'm using this index method which is basically rendering the template using this render template method and i have index.html file over here okay i'll just show you what index.html looks like which you will have to make inside another templates directory and if you want to start with flask guys we have a flask login tutorial that you can follow so there you can just learn how you can create a flask application with the multiple urls add user authentication there we have used the database integration as well so this is index.html guys where we have the title as home and we have just added a paragraph you know we just want to make sure that we are getting something so when i run this i'll explain the other code after this so we'll just run this debug is true so now we are opening this local host web server on the port 5000 and we have just added a paragraph over here so this is exactly what a typical uh, flask application looks like in the beginning if you're a beginner so this is a very basic flask application where you have just added a paragraph from an html file now to create an api what we have done here or i'll just explain quickly so this is basically a list of dictionaries where i have course id and course name associated with it and i've saved it in a courses variable so this is basically the list now on my initial route or the initial url i am rendering this template index.html but in order to access the api i have another url guys which is this particular url and what i have done here so if you access this url 
what I'm doing is I'm using this JSONify method and whatever I have in courses I am converting it into JSON format and showing it on my server. So I'll copy the URL that I want over here. As you can see as a user if you access this URL which is basically an API over here you get this particular data in the format that is readable to both which is in the JSON format. So this is how we get the data from the API and this particular link which I've just pasted here, but it would be hidden of course if you are making a request over there. So let's just test it with the request also. So this we have created just to check if we are able to make a get request or not. So if we make a get request, we have the status code 200, which means that the get request was successful. And after that we are getting the data as well. So this is how you make an API request on an API. And now let's also see if we can pass arguments in the request or not. So let's say if I'm going to pass an argument in the API over here and let's say I want to pass ID is equal to one. All right, so this will be my argument. And now what I have to do here is I have to check if ID is there in the request dot arguments. So whatever argument is there in the request, if there is an ID over there, I'll check if the ID that we are getting inside uh, that particular argument will change it to integer and after that we have an empty list which goes by the name result and then we check for each value inside our list which is also a dictionary of course. So we check if the course ID is equal to the ID that we are getting inside the argument and if it's there. So we are just uh, appending that particular result in the empty list and we return the JSONified result. All right, so let's check for that particular request as well. All right, so we have changed it over here. Let's see if you're getting the answer. And yes, so if the course ID is one, the course name is Python programming certification course that we have over here inside this. So if we change the ID to, let's say if three, is it there? Three? Yes, three is there. So the answer would become, uh, or the data that we get, the JSONified data will return Python web development certification. So this is how you can, uh, you know, create an API and make requests using arguments as well. And uh, now we'll take it one notch higher. We will do the database integration as well. So to do that, okay, so let's just stop the server here and close it. All right, yes, so first thing that you have to do is set up MySQL workbench on your system and uh, start a connection from there. Okay, we'll just close this over. So while we are opening a MySQL workbench, I'll just quickly explain the code to you guys. Everything is similar guys. So instead of that piece of code where we had courses as a list of dictionaries, we are going to integrate the database when we will fetch the data from the database over here. So for that you have to use the app.config with where you have to specify host name. There will be a user password and the database name which I have already specified over here. Secret key you can also create which you should always create if you are using it on a production server and after that everything else is same. There's only one thing that you have to import here which is flask mysql db. From that you have to import mysql and to basically make the app and after that you have to import mysql db from which we are going to use the cursors to make changes to the database. All right guys so this is my app over here db. So this is basically how I initialize the database. And now we'll move on to the part where we write the code. So basically what happened here. So we are using the get methods over here. It is basically like a default request. So even if you don't specify it, it would work. Now the first thing that I have done over here in the function is I have used a cursor. So using that cursor, I'm going to execute a command in my database. And before that, let me just connect. So we are in MySQL workbench and let's take a look at the table that we have created, which is courses over here. Right, one second, guys. So from login dot courses. Right, so we already have uh, two columns which has course ID and course name. And in course ID, it's an integer number. And in the course name, we have specified some character values with basically they are the names of the certification programs. There is Python programming certification, data science certification, machine learning, and artificial intelligence based on the number of their course ID. All right, so we'll go back to the code here and now this is the command that we are executing using the cursor which is select star from courses. So everything that we are have over there we're going to select from the course and we are using this cursor dot fetch all to fetch all the information over there and whatever information that we are getting from the cursor we are JSONifying it just like we did in the last program where we JSONified the results before returning it from the function. 
and this is how easily it would work. So let's just run this and go to the server. All right, so let's copy that URL and we are getting the same results. So Python programming certification program, data science certification program, machine learning certification program, and artificial intelligence certification program. Everything is correct. So this is how we have specified. I actually, you know, mentioned PO here in the lower case so that we have a sense of clarity that we are getting the same results in a way. Now, one more thing. So this is how I have got all the data from the database. So what I want you to do here is pass an argument in the URL, just like we did in the last program, where we mentioned the ID. And based on that, we got the results. So this is like a small assignment for you guys so that you understand how it really works. Let's just test the API request so that everything is fine. The server is already running, so we're just testing, and the status code is 200, guys. So we have successfully made or created a custom API, and this is a very simple, basic example how we create an API. And this is actually uh, not how an API is created, this is a very basic example, and we have uh, made API request to get the data from the servers. We did not really post anything, but if you check out our tutorial on Flask login page or Python login system, there we have used uh, the post request as well, where you get the data from the users and then post them on the uh, you know database that you have integrated. So that is how you create an API in Python, guys. And with this, we have come to the end of the session. So if you have any questions, you can mention them in the comment section below. And tell us in the comments also like what you liked about this session and what else do you want us to cover in the upcoming sessions. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's Python programming certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Thank you and see you guys in the next session. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!